Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Chosen family. At this time, we want to take this opportunity to welcome our first-time guests and visitors. We know that God could have led you anywhere. You could have tuned into any Facebook Live, but God chose you to be with us today. And we are so delighted. All we ask is that you hold on to your seat and receive what God has for you today. Feel free to, to worship and praise God however he gives it to you. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and we will, shall be glad in it. Amen. Praise and worship team. Good morning, Chosen Ministries. Thank you for joining us this morning. I ask that you stand if you are in the building, and if you're at home, Share your Facebook Live. If you're at work, share your Facebook Live with those on your friends list so that they can join us this morning as well. How many know that the Lord is awesome? And He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Love a chance here this morning. It's real easy. I need y'all to help me out this morning. We're down a person on the worship team, and that's okay. But y'all can help us out this morning, okay? Y'all go sleep, y'all can wake up this morning.
Hallelujah. 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 
Lord. Father God, we come before you just giving you all the honor and all the praise, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Heavenly Father, just to worship you, Father, which is our reasonable service unto you, Heavenly Father. We bless your name, Father God. We bless your name from the highest mountaintops, Heavenly Father. We bless your name, Father, from the lowest valleys, Heavenly Father. You are worthy to be praised. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we ask you right now to just come on by, oh Father. Heavenly Father, let your spirit move in this place, Heavenly Father. Let us begin to worship you, Heavenly Father. We bless your name, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah! Hallelujah is the highest praise, Heavenly Father. And you are worthy and you deserve it all, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, right now we ask you to watch over our pastor right now. Father, give her the strength to preach your word, Heavenly Father. Give her the energy to preach your word, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask that you give us clarity, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we believe these things and we receive these things in the name and by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and get in your worship mode this morning. Begin to sing unto him. You don't have to wait on us. You don't have to wait on musicians. It's okay. You are your own worshiper. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus.
God. You are the living word. You are the creator, oh God. You are the author, Father. You are the finisher, Father. You are the script writer, oh God. You are the way maker, God. You are the miracle working, God. You are him, Father. So God, we give honor unto you today, oh God. We give honor unto you today, Father. You said, Father, you're breaking every chain, God. You said that you are breaking every bondage off of us. So God, we give it all unto you today, Father. You are the author. You write our story, oh God. You are the living word. So God, regardless of who got it wrong in our life, you still write our story, oh God. And God, all we got to do, Father, is tap into the vein of you, oh God, to understand that we are covered by the blood, to understand that we are healed by the blood. Oh God, you are the living word. Your word is the same yesterday, Father, today and forever. So God, we give it all. You are the living word. We tap into this vein this morning because you are the living word. Somebody needs to know that the creator of this earth, he says he's the author of your life. Somebody needs to understand that he's making your wrongs right. Somebody needs to understand that he still has the last say. Somebody needs to understand that the author, the omega, the father, and your hell is still in control of it all. Yeah, 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 yeah
So hang with me. Isaiah, the first chapter, beginning at verse 2. If you can stand here in the building and at home for the reading of the word. I am reading from Amplified. It says, Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth. For the Lord has spoken. I have reared a coral site and bought upon sons, but they have rebelled against me and have broken away. Can you play me a little something? The ox known its owner and the donkey its master feeding trough. But Israel does not know me as Lord. My people do not understand. All sinful nation, a people loaded down with wickedness, with sin, with injustice, with wrongdoing, offspring of evildoers, sons who have be behaved corruptly. They have abandoned, rejected the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel, provoking him to anger. They have turned away from him. Why should you be stricken and punished again since no change is in result from you? You only continue to rebel. The whole head is sick. The whole earth is faint and sick from the sole of the foot even to the head. There is nothing healthy in the nation's body. Only bruised, welts, raw wounds, not pressed out of bandage, not softened with oil as remedy. Your land lies desolate because of your disobedience. Your cities are burned with fire. Your fields strangers and devouring them in your very presence. It is desolate and overthrown by strangers. Verse 8, the daughters of Zion is left like a desert sheltered in a vineyard, like a watchman's hut in a cucumber field, like a besieged city isolated, surrounded by devastation. If the Lord of hosts has not left us few survivors, we would be like Sodom. We will be like Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, rulers of Jerusalem, your rulers of another Sodom. Listen to the law and instructions of our God. Your people of another Gomorrah, what are you multiplied sacrifices to me without your repentance, says the Lord. 
I have had enough of your burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed cattle without your obedience. And I have taken no pleasure in the blood of bulls of lambs or goats offered without repentance. Verse 12, when you come to appear before me, uh, who requires this of you? This trampling of my temple courts by your simple feet. Verse 13, do not bring worthless offerings Again, your incense is repulsive to me. Your new moon and Sabbath observance, the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure wickedness, your sin, your injustice, your wrongdoing, the squirrel of the festival of assembly. I hate the hypocrisy of your new moon, festivals, and your appointed feasts. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. So when you spread out your hands in prayer, pleading for my help, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, even though you offer many prayers, I will not be listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Get your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the ruthless, defend the fatherless, plead for the right of the window in court. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And God has spoken. The indictment is in and God has spoken. I was in the book of Isaiah, I was in 40, and God kept pulling me back to chapter 1. And as I was reading this text yesterday, I uh, I couldn't sleep. It's like God is giving you some mail to read, and you just can't sleep at night. So I got up a couple of times, and I reread the scripture to make sure I got the facts straight. And God began to speak to me. He says, daughter, I have already spoken over and over again. We are in a season that it is so desolated in every area of yes. our life. Yes. And God is saying that it is time for us to understand that the indictment is already in. As a church, we have fasted in the month of June for 30 days. And God revealed to me uh, after the fast, he said, now that you're cleaned out, you need to take another 60 days to get filled back up. And God is saying in this season, we cannot get used to the same old thing. Amen. We cannot get used to doing rituals and things, but we have to understand, as he said, the burden is becoming too much for him. He no longer wants to be tapped into that thing. So in this passage, God uses the mouthpiece of the prophet Isaiah to state his claim against Judah. God shares his frustration, his heart, and his direction in the passage. I know many of you can relate to when it feels like to be frustrated with someone or something. You get to a point you no longer want to deal with them or deal with it. You get to a point where you are saying, I can't take this anymore. You get to a point where you are going to check them, correct them, and then move on because uh, they become desolated in the situation. Have you ever been in a situation where you become so frustrated with the other party that no longer can you keep having the same conversation over and over and over again? Have you ever had to deal with a child and you told them one time, two times, three times, don't sit on my couch, don't room and you get tired and frustrated where you want to become disconnected and God is saying for the believer today I have told you all time and time and time again you got to turn and draw back to me because we are in a season where judgment and the indictment is in you get to a point where you're frustrated that sometimes have you ever been frustrated with people that you just cut them off with no explanation? You say, this don't require all of that. Amen. This don't require this nor that. I said last week, somebody said, I said, well, you got to understand the tax bracket I'm in. And it was like, is that arrogant? No, I'm letting you know that, baby, well, I said there's certain things we do and we do not do in this season. There's certain conversations we have and I will not have with you. When you sit in a certain seat and you move in a certain way, you no longer do a childlike things in childlike way. You got to understand 
the tax bracket that I am in. You got to understand the vein of God that I am in. God says in this season, he does not want to cut us off with no explanation and move on. You feel in your heart that you have spoken your peace and now you must move on. Well, we can see in this passage that God has arrived to this point where he lays out and lays it all out for the believer. He says in the passage that they were acting like Sodom and Gomorrah. In other words, they have operated in sin and transitioning themselves to receive judgment. The people of Judah stop respecting the reverence and the presence of God. We lose respect for God when we lose respect for the things of God. God himself should be enough for the believer to sit straight and fly right in this lifetime. However, we are with witnessing that that is not the case. Respecting the reverence of God is understanding the fullness of who he is. You cannot respect the reverence of God if you really don't know in fullness of who he is. When you respect the reverence of God, you posture yourself in a different way. When you understand who daddy is, you move in a different way. When you understand the author you move in a different way. Tell your neighbor, say, my tax bracket is different. My tax bracket is different. I no longer want to be in petty place. I no longer want to have petty conversation. My tax bracket, baby, is a little differently. I've got to move a little bit differently because the God that I serve, the author and the omega, the finisher and the writer, I know who I am. But that's when you your life. The reverence that you have for him is totally different. When you understand when daddy is in the building, you move in a different way. You pitch and fix yourself in a different way. When you understand who he is, God himself should be enough for us to understand who he is. We have to understand, just like the people of Judah, the believers today have lost the vision of God and have become complacent with the basic religious acts of God. God is not a man that he shall lie. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is very much alive and moving today. God is the creator, the author, the finisher, the redeemer, and the ruler. I need to tell somebody else that again. God is the creator. He's the author. He's the finisher. He's the redeemer. He is the ruler. God is all of that. God is the great I am. God is the king of kings. God is the Lord of lords. God is omnipotent. God is Jehovah. God is Jireh. God is the provider. God is the Oh, 
to have a conversation. He said, baby, you just want to stay humble. I said, oh, I'm real good and humble. But baby, at 40, I move a little bit differently. I don't play these games. I don't have these conversations. Baby, I know who God is in my life. And if my sauce is too spicy for you, baby, bust your move. That's when you know who God is. I got a phone call on Friday from my VP. She said, uh, oh, what you doing? I said, oh, I'm just resting. It was my PTO day. So I wasn't working. I wasn't moving. I wasn't flapping flapjacks. I was resting in the midst of the Lord. Amen. She says, uh, so-and-so called me yesterday because uh, I got recognized at work. So-and-so called me about you yesterday. She wanted to know why was you recognized and why was your name up on the such and such. I said, oh, okay. Well, why are you telling me? She said, well, I just wanted to let you know why so-and-so, why I called you yesterday about so-and-so. I said, let me tell you something. Well, I sit in my life today. I don't care that so-and-so is upset that somebody else recognizes me for the glory of God that's on my life. I don't care about so-and-so. I don't care about so-and-so. So you tell so-and-so that I don't care if they upset about what God has done in my life. I don't care so-and-so. Because I don't care for so and so either. But I'm giving so and so some grace and love. Because that's what I've been required to do. But you let so and so know. Next time they got a question about me, baby, they better come to me. But see, so and so knows how I move. And they don't want this sauce in their life. You better let people know who God is in your life. There you go. Then we stop fighting the things that are connected to him. See, in the text 
the people of Judah has shown they had no desire serving God with the wholeness of their heart. We have learned how to get from God. We have learned how to get from God. However, we have not learned how to get in alignment with him. See, we are accustomed to what we can get from him. Come on, somebody. We have not grown accustomed to what we can get from him. However, fail to walk with him. When you are in relationship with God, the things of God and the heart of God becomes important and urgent to you. Uh, it's a sense of urgency. Because when God has given me this kind of text, I can't sleep at night. I can't sleep with my pretty self and wake up pretty. Baby, I had to give myself a pet talk. Father, you said like Sodom and Gomorrah. Father, you said that our hands got blood. Father, what do you mean? He said, God, the indictment is already. Verse 6, from the sole of the foot, uh, even, uh, even to the head, there is nothing healthy in the nations of the body. We can't see anything healthy in the body of Christ. We can't see that believers have become religious and lack the understanding of the things of God. Pastor, how do you know that we become desolate in the church? How, how do you know, Pastor? Well, I'm glad that you all have asked. We have become religious in the acts of God, when we are in the house of God, and when we text and scroll and shop during service, that's when we are doing the acts of God. We are just doing the things of God. We don't even believe ourselves. We want so and so to see us. We want our mama to stop asking us to come to church. We just want to do the acts of God and not believe in the things of God. We no longer believe God speaks through the prophet. So we just pretend in the act. See, in the Old Testament, only the prophets and the chosen ones spoke directly to God. See, the other believers had to wait from the word of God. The priest will go into the intercourt and he will wait patiently on God. The priest will wait for the word of God. And then the people that were in the outer court, only allowed in the outer court, will wait for God for them to come back. And then they will wait to hear the voice of God. And they will be watching with anticipation. You believe that God still ain't put an authority in order. And see what happens is, it's a fight in the spirit. Because you don't want to get in line with the spirit. But back in the day, baby, you weren't even allowed in the intercourt. You weren't even allowed in the intercourt. But see, today, uh, in the church today, we don't believe that God speaks of the shepherd. That is why we don't pay attention and what they are saying. That is why you see so much disruption, discord, dishonor, and disbelief in the church. The saints do not believe in the power that resides in the church or in the people that he has assigned to cover the sheep. Therefore, you hear believers saying things such as, I will cover myself. I, I, I will cover myself. And then you see them becoming combative with the shepherd. Come on, somebody. How are you fighting the things of God? How are you dishonoring the fellowship with God? We have become complacent as believers. Well, my church ain't open, so I'm still watching online. Well, if you understood the power of God, you will go to a church where it's open. Baby, I can't sit in the bed not, a, not another day. I got to be around some other believers. I got to do a foot cut or something wrong and do some corporate ministry. I got to be in a church where the door is always open. I got to be where God is. I can't be on the internet looking at the Lord because I may have to prostrate myself across the pulpit. I got to be where God is. God is making everybody eat their words. Uh, when the pastor said that the doors are always open, 
half of y'all ain't even open your doors back up. And God is saying that in this season that you got to understand the reverence of God. You got to make a sense of urgency. Baby, where you going? I got to go where God is. I, I got to go where God is chosen.
in the world. We want them to say sorry, but we don't want to forgive. We want the respect, but we don't want to show respect. We want the things of God, but not God himself. We have become rituals in the things of God. However, left the practice of serving him. See, God said in the text in verse 14, he says, I hate the hypocrisy of the new moon festivals and your appointed feasts. They have become burden to me. I am weary of uh, burying them. So when you spread out your hands in prayer pleading for my help, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, even though you offer many prayers, I will not be listening. Your hands are full of blood. I need three people right now. Give me three people. Come on up here real quick. I need three. There you go. Come on up here. Let's go. 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 let us See, God says, if we don't get our act together, uh, if you don't get the sin in your life together, the blood, show them the blood, the blood will be on your hands. If you don't quit lying and cheating, if you don't quit causing discord, the blood, the blood will be on your hands. See, God is saying, you can't keep coming to him with this blood on to serve him with that blood on your head. You can't keep at the night. You got the reverence of God and you still got the blood on your head. We can't keep doing this. And it was like, in my study they said uh, back in the day when they would pray to God they would have their hands open uh, and they would look up to God. I uh, see I don't know who changed that posture to our eyes closed and our hands closed. See, when you got your hands open, you can receive the things of God. When you got your eyes open, you keep your mind stayed on God. And God is saying that if we continue on, uh, when it comes to judgment day, baby, that blood is going to be on your head. You can't cover that blood up. You can't act like it ain't there. See, we like to dress up in polo. And we still got blood on our hands. We like to still dip and dab and flip and dip. And we got blood on our hands. We like to do all of this. And the blood is still on our hands. When do we get to the point where we want to wash the blood off our hands? When do we get to the point where we want to get the reverence of God? When do we get to the point where we want to serve God? We got the blood on our hands. We got the blood. God says, y'all can go wash that off. God says, he says, oh, even though you offer me prayers, I will not be listening because your hands are full of blood. God says it's going to get to a point that he gets frustrated with us. We can keep acting like that we honor him. We can keep acting like that we respect him. But baby, that blood is on your hands. God ain't playing around with the believer today. That's why I can't play around with my life in this season. I am not going to stand in the pulpit and give you something that tickles your ear. I don't care if every time you walk in my church and it's a correcting word until you get corrected. I don't care because baby, come judgment day, my hand ain't going to have no blood on me. I ain't going to have no blood on my hand. My husband told me it can't be a plus one, so I can't ride his coattail to heaven. It ain't going to be no blood on my hand. So I don't care if y'all don't like me. I don't care if y'all don't respect me. Because it ain't going to be no blood on my hand. God is saying He is tired of practicing and not believing. He is tired of us pretending and not receiving. See, you can't offer God a sacrifice without any obedience. You can't offer obedience without any repentance. I will repeat that one more time. Y'all put this in the comment. See, you can't offer no sacrifice without no obedience. You can't offer God obedience without repentance. See, we gotta get the blood off 
our hands. Every time you allow another day to go by without correcting the things he has identified, you will have to answer to the blood being on your hands. Some of y'all better stop debating with the prophet uh, is saying and get in alignment with the assignment. See, I can't worry about who and what they saying about me. I must stay the course of the assignment. I can't afford for the blood to be on my hands. I can't afford for God to strike me down there. I can't afford it in this pulpit. I can't afford to not compromise the integrity of Christ for your feelings. Baby, if you're mad, you gonna get over it. And if you don't, oh, so be it. I can't afford in my life. God is saying that we have to open our eyes and we have to open our hands and we have to receive what God is offering in this season. There you go, Simone. Let her be. Uh, God will come through the baby. There you go. It's a sense of urgency. It's a sense of urgency. You can't quiet the anointing. It's a sense of urgency that God is saying we got to get the blood off our hands. God says open your heart and let him in. Close your mouth and stop the baby. Sit down and be the candidate for correction. God said in the text in verse 3, he said the ox knows its owner and the donkey knows its master. But Israel does not know me as Lord. My people do not understand. God compared the people to dumb animals. He said even the dumb animals know their master. So how in the world we don't know ours? How in the world we don't understand what he is saying? God is saying in this season, baby, I can't argue with you. God is saying in this season, you got to get in where you're feeling. God is saying in this season, you got to show the reverence of him in your life. How in the world do we not believe that, uh, that he will arrive? We have arrived to the last days. How in the world do we continue with our mannish and narcissistic ways? How in the world do we continue this over and over again? So God is saying that in this season, you have to open up your heart to receive the things of God. Yes, yes. You have to begin to pray with your eyes open. Because yeah, yeah. Father, I don't want to be blinded to anything in this season, oh God. God, in this season, I want you to be the author, the creator in my life. God, in this season, I need my hands clean, Father. God, in this season, Father, I need more of you. I need you to wash me white, clean as snow. God, in this season, Father, I smell a little bit. Oh, God, in this season, I need you to wash my hands. Oh, God, in this season, I need you to wash my hands. Oh, God, in this season, I need you to wash my hands, Daddy. I need the red guard. I need the blood guard off my hands. I need you to wash me, Daddy. What is snow? I need you to wash my hands. today. We thank you God that you are showing us today how to honor you like never before. God, we want the reverence back in the church. We want the reverence back in our life. We want the reverence of you back in our hearts. So Father, have your way. Do what you want to do. Wash us up real good, God. Get it at the root, Father. Show be more like you, God, in this season. God, I pray for the believer today. They may not have not given their life to you, Father, but God, I ask that they stand boldly in the central court and say, Father, I repent for my sins. I welcome you in my life. I'm going to receive what you have for me. God, I believe you gave your only begotten son who died on the cross for me. And so, God, I give you my yes, Father. Give you my yes. If you said just that thing, you've just given your life to Christ. The second thing you need to do is get yourself in a Bible based biblical church. And then you also need to do is honor the house, honor the vision, honor the pastor, honor the leadership team. I am not one that is going to allow anybody to disrespect.
respect me or my church. I'm not in that season. I got too many lives in here waiting to hear what God had to say. So I'm not going to compromise the word of God for nobody in this season. I've got to be connected to the most high in this season. And you want to be connected to this church, baby. I'm going to love you like never before. I'm going to cover you like never before. And I'm going to instill in you like never before. You just get with Sister Iva Roper online or Sister Lily, raise your hand. And let her know that you want to be connected to this house. But God is saying that the indictment is in. There you go. The indictment is in. If you want the strongholds broken off their ankles, or the chains off your ankles, you got to begin to let God in and let him know that you understand that he's the author of your life. He is the finisher. He's going to finish writing your story. He's going to fix your crooked places. He's going to heal you where you're wounded. He's going to help you. God says you got to understand the reverence of the faith that you need in this season. So God, we thank you. We honor you, Father. God, I thank you that the believer received what you have for them today. I thank you, oh God, that the believer received it. Come on, say what you have for them today, oh God. God, I thank you that you cover us in our mind. You cover us in our heart. I pray for every leader today, oh God, that they bring forth your word with power. And God, that we get the church back in order. And Father, it's in Jesus' name, Lord, that we pray this prayer. Amen.
here over in our hospitality. Bring a friend. This is open to anyone. You do not have to be a member of Chosen. And then lastly, as some of you know, and, and those of you don't know, you know now, we are going to celebrate Pastor's birthday. Her birthday is this Wednesday. She will be turning 40. Bless God for another year. Yes, yes. Bless God. Give her another year. So if you all would go with me into the hospitality room, and we will uh, bless her with a song. I'm going to ask the praise and worship to help us out with the happy birthday song. And we're just going to show love to her, and then you can be on your way. Amen. Amen. And you've already been dismissed. All right, all right.